You know, electrical costs can get very expensive for our utility customers during the summer months because of increased demand costs. Now, to help lower these expenses for you and your utility, you can help out by planting a free shade tree. Now, landscaping can be the best long-term investment on saving money on both your heating and cooling costs in your home. With proper placement, trees and shrubs can protect your home from winter winds and intense summer heat. Coniferous trees, or evergreen trees, are those species that don't lose their leaves over the seasons. Planting coniferous trees on the north and west sides of your home can block those chilly winter winds. Shade trees need to be deciduous. This means they lose their leaves in the winter to let the sunshine in, but will shade your house in the summer. You'll want to group them mainly on the southwest and southeast corners of your property. Make note how large the tree is going to be when it is full grown. Leave plenty of room for it to grow without being too close to your home or utility lines. A general rule of thumb is to plant them about 15 to 20 feet away from your home. Columbia Water and Light has sponsored the Tree Power Program that provides a free shade tree for all electric customers. Sign up for the program and you'll receive a free landscape audit. Now in this audit pack, you'll receive a diagram of where to plant your tree. You'll also receive a coupon that's redeemable for a six to 10 foot tall free shade tree. Now as this tree matures, you'll realize a 30% reduction in your cooling cost. Now let's see, you get a free tree, lower your cooling cost, what a deal. Now as I mentioned earlier, the Tree Power Program qualifies you for one free tree per electric meter. There are a number of free trees to choose from in our Tree Power Program. Currently we offer river birches, green ash, red oak, and Bradford pears. Now today we're gonna to go ahead and plant one of those trees, so let's give it a try. All right, now we've got our tree uh, placed in this hole, which is kind of a pre-dug hole. We have a berm soil situation here where we have some loose soil. You notice that the root ball wants to be about the same height as the soil that you're placing it in. And in this case, we've got about a twice as big as the root ball itself. Now, if you have very hard clay soil, you might want to get a tiller or a shovel, dig that up, make it real loose, move in some compost material, maybe a little sand to help keep it loose. We want to get these it loose enough so the tree roots won't have any obstruction, any hassle of spreading out and getting a good firm uh, foundation where it can suck up moisture and grow real fast for you. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is get rid of these support strings. You can cut those with the scissors, of course. And there's some support wires also underneath there. Just bend those out of the way so we can get them underneath the uh, ground level. Now we want to get rid of the uh, burlap root sack uh, by cutting in a few spots like this. And then we're just going to fold that back around the side so that that soil is open to the uh, sunlight and the water and you get good uh, penetration there. But this way we can also keep the roots together. Now we want to feed that space between the root ball and the hole with some nice topsoil. And we mix a little compost material with this to make sure it's got some nutrient in there. And put in a little bit at a time and then be nice to go ahead and tamper this down with say either a brick or a two by four, something that's nearby. So we can kind of eliminate some of the soil voids that may be around those roots and may also make sure that it stays nice and secure in the, in the hole that we planted it in. Now we bought some store-bought uh, compost to make sure that it's got some good nutrient around those uh, roots so they get a good start. We're gonna tamp that down with our hands loosely and then kind of put more soil in there and then we wanna finish it off by tampering it down to make sure that we don't have a whole lot of voids and we get a good uh, adhesion between the new hole and the root ball. Okay, once we get our soil all tampered down nice and level with the root ball, we want to go ahead and put about three inches of mulch around the uh, roots. Now, of course, that'll help conserve moisture for you, as well as give the roots a little bit of respite from the summertime sun. Now, the way you water your plant the first time is you want to get your hose, get a small trickle of water coming out like this. We want to go ahead and water half of it for about an hour, then, then switch it over here and water it for another hour on this side. Okay? You don't want to overwater your tree. It's one of the biggest causes of tree failure or death in the first year is overwatering. The idea is to test the soil for dryness. If you need some watering, go ahead and do it, but saturate it when you do. Now, if your tree's in an area where there's high wind and you're worried about it kind of bending over, of course, you can put some T-bar stakes in there with some rubber holders, keep the tree from getting scarred up and keep it in nice and in, in place. Now, once this tree starts to grow and expand, you not only benefit from its beauty, but also the energy conservation that'll provide you. It's easy enough to sign up. Just call the Columbia Water and Light office or go online at www.gocolumbiamo.com. Another important phone call you need to make before you dig will be 1-800-DIG-RIGHT.
This will alert you to any underground utilities and ensure your safety during the installation of your new tree.